right. Okay, now let's switch gears. All right, so we've gone through all this. Now I want to talk about etching things. Now you're going to have two, uh, we've, we've been working on surface embellishment samples, right? We're working on stamping, we're going to roll it right. We're going to start more surface embellishment. This is a different technique for surface embellishment, all right? Uh, it's called etching, all right? Now etching, what it refers to is that we are going to take a piece of metal right here, this piece of metal, and we are going to coat it with something that is chemical resistant, all right? So we're taking and applying this material, and this material is called a resist, okay? A resist. So the resist, any place where it's applied, will protect the metal. And then when we put it into this chemical, a chem the chemical will start to eat away at the surface that's exposed. So anything exposed gets eaten. Okay, that makes sense? So it starts you know, chewing away and the uh, material, okay? So we have to know what our options for resist, okay? Now we're gonna do three samples again, okay? Three samples total. We're gonna do two copper, so you're gonna take two of your two by two pieces, right? You're gonna take, you're gonna cut some more, probably, but you already cut, I think, I think you needed four earlier, right? So you still got two little pieces that you could put on, right? That you could, or that you could cut, finish cutting, and those would be your two copper samples, okay? All right? Out of that sheet I gave you, okay? So you have two samples that are copper and one that's aluminum. And Maggie was so kind to cut us some pieces already. So I'm gonna pass these around, take one, Pass it around, okay? And this is going to be your aluminum sample, okay? Now, for this next surface embellishment sample set, you should use different resists on these pieces, okay? Different resists on these pieces. That's our goal. And you're like, how do I do that? Well, I'm going to give you some. I'm going to give you some options. But at first, I want to kind of outline the assignment. Okay, so for Wednesday, I would like you to take one of these pieces, okay, and draw a design on one of your sample pieces, one of these, you choose, aluminum or copper, and I want you to use your paint pen that I told you to get, right, one of these, I want you to draw some sort of design on that two by two, on one of those two by two. So if you can have that done by next class, then we'll be able to put it in an acid or chemical and etch it, okay? Everybody clear on that? Okay, so that's for Wednesday. And that can be done at home, right, easily. You can just stomp your piece today, and then you can draw on it, and we're ready to go, yeah. It does not. That's a great question, Chloe. Yes. So does it have to be a meal? No, it does not. Because we are not, we're not stamping. We're not manipulating. We're not. This is purely chemical, right? So no, none of these other samples need etch for etching or need uh, a meal for etching. Okay. Okay. Your other assignment is to find a black and white image that's two by two inches. Okay. And I want you to print it out on white paper. So, yes, take one. Yes, take one. Now, the reason that I want you to, the reason I want you to do this is that each person is going to find a black and white, draw, like a black and white image. It's just going to be a JPEG, okay? Just a JPEG. Find, you can find something on the internet. Okay, you don't. You don't have. You could draw this if you wanted to, but just find something on the internet. Okay, and I'd like for it to be highly detailed. Okay, so this is an example. Students brought in little two by twos that they printed out. They printed one two by two image out. So I had you know 
one from Eli, right? And I had one from Laurel, and I had one from Chloe, and I had one from Deb, right? Okay? I had one from Catherine. So it's like I took all these pieces that you bring me, black and white images, it needs to be black and white. High contrast. Yes? Why do they have to be black and white? Yeah, I'm going to get to that. The reason they have to be black and white is that this is, you know, we're going to be using what's called a toner transfer, and we're going to transfer the toner from the copier machine onto a special paper that then gets ironed on to your mouth. I'm going to show that today. Okay, well, this will all make sense in just a second. So what you'll do is you'll bring me these images, and I'll composite them onto one sheet of paper. Okay, and then what I do is I bring this the copy machine and I invert it, all right? Now I invert the, I'll do that for you. You don't need to invert it, okay? The only reason you would need to invert is if it had text on it, okay? So you pre-invert it, or I guess technically here, right? So I'm gonna invert the image so that there's more black than there is white. Now why am I doing that? Well, because anything that's black is going to be protected, okay? Does that make sense? So think about it. We do this, and we want this to be black, right? We invert it, that way it's gonna etch away. The image is gonna etch, okay? And then when we liver a sulfur later, this will be eaten away. The liver of sulfur will be down in, and we can rub it off, and it'll look like this again. You follow me? Throw that exclusion. You gotta think of the reverse kind of etching, okay? So you need to buy a two by two. If you want to bring a couple things in to try, that's fine. I'll print them out. And then we're going to print it on a special paper called E3. And the E3 is a glossy paper that the toner gets printed onto, and then I can iron this onto the metal. I know that sounds right, but that's our, that, those are going to be our steps, OK? So that's, you're going to have, that is a homework assignment. And then the other thing I want you to do is create a digital AI file or find an image that we can convert digitally, okay? So I'm going to show that today in class two, and it'll make sense in a second. I know right now you're probably like, whoa, whoa, whoa hang on, what am I doing? Just know that you're finding a second image that probably isn't as detailed. This is the one right here that you want to be detailed. This one, not as detailed, okay? So this, it's cool if it's really detailed. Because that's what this material, this resist material is meant for. Okay, so everybody clear on what our assignments are for Wednesday? Okay, and again, I know I'm stacking a lot of things on top. You haven't even got a chance to roll a print. You haven't even got a chance to stamp. I'm doing that so we can distribute us across the room so that we can take turns. It's gonna take a while to edge, okay? So that's why I'm hitting you hard here. Because some of you are probably like overwhelmed right now. Don't worry, we're, we're gonna have some time to work. Okay, now, quiz question for the etching quiz, for the etching quiz on Monday, is give me some options for what my resist can be. What can my resist be made from, all right? Well, the first, type of resist that is like the OG resist is a material called asphaltum. Asphaltum, it's a, it's a, a, a tar-like substance, okay? It's mixed with lacquer thinner, and we brush and paint this on. And we, we create a coating over the surface of the metal, like this. And it takes a little bit for this to dry. I mean, usually, I mean, it'll take like probably a couple hours Okay, for this to draw. And then what this allows us to do is to come back with a scribe, a sharp utensil. So if you've ever taken a printmaking class, you may have used something like this for, for etching, okay, for etching your copper plate. And then you can draw just by scribing through that material, okay? I'll pass those around. So we'll, we'll scratch through that, and any place where the asphaltum is removed, we've now exposed the metal for etching. Follow? So if you're someone who likes to draw, 
And that might be a resist you want to try. I've had a student, a senior, recently do this amazing piece, the sculpture that was all, they had like, it was a wagon, and it had all this wood grain texture on the wagon sheets. It was all hand drawn, used asphaltum first, drew it, etched it, and then removed the resist. So asphaltum's an option. Some of you might say, hey, I don't have a paint pen, but I have fingernail polish, right? You were, you're, you were going through your black phase, right? Your goth phase, and then you kind of got out of it, so you got this black, I don't know, polish, like sitting there doing nothing. We could actually paint with this, right? And we could do a similar thing. We could do either coat the whole thing with fingernail polish and then scribe that through, or we could like use it and paint with it and create and actually create like polka dots or whatever you want to create patterns. Now what's the problem with fingernail polish over time? What happens to it on your nails? Yeah, it chips, it flakes off, right? So you can't you notice the line quality is not as good on, on this as it is on asphalt, right? Because I waited too long for it to dry. I should have like let it be a little bit, yeah, a little tacky, and that would work better. Okay? So that's an option, right? We've already talked about paint pen, right? Paint pen would be an option that we can like paint with this, this, this applicator, right? Um, and we, if we get a thinner tip, we could even get more detail. If you wanted to, you know, use a paint pen, spooge out some paint on a, on a little piece of cardboard and then take a smaller stylus, a brush, and like actually paint up, you could do that, okay? Another option would be spray paint. We could take and make a paper stencil, right? A paper stencil that we cut out or that we laser cut. And then we could lay that over or we could use tape. We could tape off of that one and spray paint in the spray booth next door. And spray paint will hold up to that chemical, okay? All right? I can also pass this. All right, and then some other options. One would be vinyl, which we're gonna talk about. So vinyl, we've got a machine right here that I'm gonna show you how to use. And it's got a little razor blade in it, and it basically cuts an image. Now that's what we're gonna do with this. You're gonna find me an image that isn't too detailed that we can digitize. So if you don't know how to use an illustrator, don't worry. You don't, you, if you do, you could do an illustrator file. If you don't, I'm gonna show you how to use a program to digitize a JPEG. So you find me a JPEG or you draw me something on a, on a piece of paper and we'll take a photograph of it and then we'll bring it, whatever. I'll show you how to digitize something, okay? Using software. So we can peel out the part of the vinyl we don't want and then we can apply it to the metal. I'm gonna show that today. And we basically show you how to make stickers like that. We can make a sticker that we weed out the part we don't want, right? So this white part would be etched. And then I basically peel this off. This is called transfer tape. Again, I'm gonna go over how to do this. We peel this, this backing off, it's sticky, and we stick it on the metal, okay? And then we have another resist technique. Okay. And then the last one is called PMP or E3. We're using E3. PMP stands for press and peel. But these are both toner transfers that use laser toner to put it on the metal. Okay. So your quiz question is like, give me four resists. Okay. What are four possibilities or something like that? I think it's four. But know that any of these will work as resists. Now I often get people who ask me, well, what about Sharpie? Sharpie will work up to a certain point, but then it starts to break down in the acid. So it'll, it'll, it'll work for a shallow edge, but not for a deep edge. And on these samples, I'm looking for a deep, deep edge, okay? Now, a couple things. Do not, do not reserve a toner transfer, transfer, transfer for your aluminum, okay? Not aluminum, all right? If the chemical we etch aluminum with breaks down, 
rapidly the e, the E3 edge, the toner, okay? It reacts. So don't reserve, like if you're gonna do a paint pen, probably paint pen or vinyl is what I would recommend for the aluminum, okay? If you were choosing. But you're gonna choose, and I don't care what you do here, okay? I, I mean, I've told you to do paint pen on one of these, right? But I don't care how you mix and match. If you say, Frank, I really want to try that. I want a laser. I've got, I know, like you guys have access to laser cutter, right? You might say, I want to laser cut some template that I want to spray paint here. That's fine. Totally fine. Your call, okay? The main idea here is that these samples are an opportunity to test things, to try things. So you do what you want to do, but you never know how this might impact what we make later on for our big project. Okay, so this is a chance for you to try things out. So if one of these sounds really appealing to you, you're like, man, is this a paint pen thing? I'd like to do the fingernail polish thing, right? Cool, do it, do it. Just make, make it cool, okay? And give me a cool image, make it be something really interesting, okay? So everybody got that? What are our signs? Yeah. Um, for the print part, you just want us to print one image, or is there multiple like the other? Yeah, you didn't all, I can, uh, yeah, well yeah, if you want to do multiple, yeah, the, the reason I do that, did that is I had a small class that semester, and I wanted to just use the full page, so I, do, I duplicated, but really all you need is one image, yeah, one image, okay. but if you want to do a second one of the same thing, or just to have a backup, or if you want to do a different image, so you've got two, for the future, like you're like, man, I kind of like sneak in an extra, you know, etch. I'll always take extra samples if you're like wanting to boost your grade that way, okay? All right. Okay, how do we do this? Let's talk about E3, all right? So E3 is the one that I'm going to show you how to apply. So just so we're clear, today is just talking about resist. Next class, we'll actually do the etching, all right? Now on this table over here, I have a whole variety of samples. I recommend you look at them, okay, before when we get done to the demo, you may want to spend some time and, uh, and look at this, okay? So, um, all right, so E3 prep. So again, imagine I have taken your image and I have printed it out. So I have this sheet here, we'll take this sheet as an example. So I have this, just on regular paper. I made this composite page. Then I took this page and I printed it up at the uh, copy machine. This paper I buy from Rio Grande. It's called E3. You buy a package of it. I'm gonna provide it for you, right? I'm gonna provide it for you. And Basically, I take and I print it, and it doesn't matter which side I print it on, on this particular material. I can print, both sides are ready for toner. PMP is not that way, it's one side only. It only works on the dull side, the glossy side, it does. And this was originally created for creating circuit boards, for making custom circuit boards. So Radio Chef used to carry PMP. PMP is a little bit more temperamental than uh, E3. E3, I think, is easier to use. So what we want is nice, rich, dark tones, okay? It cannot be grayscale, okay? Let's say you had an image of someone that was a photograph, and I do have some photographs I've etched over there using another process called photo etching. So when I was a student, you could actually use these really nasty Kodak chemicals, and you could actually coat the metal with a light-sensitive material, and you could develop a photograph right onto metal. Super cool product. They still do this in industry. Really neat. It's called industrial photo etching. But you can do some quasi grayscale, right, with this. But this, you can't. It has to be black and white. And so this student, I said, hey, which one do you want? You want it, you know, with this, it's going to etch everything around. Anything that's white is going to get etched. So make a note of your, to yourself. Again, most of you are going to find a black and white image, and I'm going to invert it for you to tempt the black and white. But just know that which way you want to do this, okay? All right, so we print this out. So I'm going to take this full composite page up to the copy machine. I put it on there, and I print it. And it's the toner. This only works with laser toner. You cannot print.
print this on the inkjet printer and expect it to work. It won't. Okay, so if you had a laser printer at home, you could do this. I used to have students go to the library and you know slide the paper in, and if a librarian they saw them, they freaked out. They were like, what are you putting in our copy machine? You know, that was when it was blue. Now it's hard to, to tell what this is. So we, we slide it in the tray, beater, and it cranks out. Then you'll notice I handle it by its edges. Write that down. So if you get your fingerprints on here, the toner will not want to transfer. So you need to keep that piece super, super clean. All right, now I'm gonna prep my sample by cutting this piece of ink green. And again, this is really great for detailed things. Things that would be like impossible to cut a vinyl stencil on. Over there on the table, I have a mat. I actually did a mat. And then don't forget, if you do a mat, you'll notice that I screwed up on the mat because I did not, in, I didn't actually mirror, and so the text is in reverse. Okay. By the way, this was done with E3. So this is what it looks like after it's put on. This is what it looks like when it's etched. Okay. So maps are awesome. Um, here is a, a, a page from a comic book, Guardians of the Galaxy, right? So it's Guardians of the Galaxy. Here's uh, Spider-Man before I've applied a patina. So this is after etching. So it's got the E3 resist. I know it looks white. It's just because of the paper, how it looks. This is actually black underneath it here. So look at the web. I mean, it's crazy the detail you can give it. So your image that you select Detailed, okay? Really detailed. Okay, so I've got my piece and I'm gonna prep my metal now. Chloe asks, do we need to anneal? No, we do not need to anneal, but there is something we need to do. What do you think we need to do to this piece of metal before we apply this? Clean it, why? Yeah, it might have like all sorts of gunk and the toner won't stick. Now, this, I get pretty particular with, I actually don't like using just scotch brush. I like using a very poor sandpaper. Because the, the sandpaper, when you say coarse, I say at least 220, okay? It can be poor, more coarse than this. But the paper will give us a super kind of toothy surface and it helps the toner stick. This is the key. If you wrote one thing down today, clean this by scrubbing it vigorously. And I'll show you the difference. Look at that. See that? I mean, it's like we're really scuffing this baby up, okay? And I gotta get every edge, okay? process to make sure you do that. If there's any place it's not, make sure and hit it with the sandpaper again. Okay? Now, again, handle this by the edges. Okay? Don't put your, you know, grubby little hands all over that. Now, this is going to get flipped over on there. Just make sure that metal's dry before you do that. 
Now, the next step is going to be to come over here, and I have pulled out a tool called the burnisher. The burnisher gets stored. There's a couple different ones in here. Now, don't get confused. This is a three angle scraper. This is a burnisher. It's smooth. We have smaller ones, we have larger ones. I like this one. This is my favorite. All right. The other thing that we pulled out, and a lot of times we store this underneath the cabinet, is this old iron. And I am going to set this on between one and two permanent press. Okay? Does anybody even iron their clothing anymore? You do. You're so good. You're so good. Huh? I just ironed my license. Yeah, me too. Just my dress shirts. Dress shirts, sometimes pants. Yep. Kind of lost art. Okay, now you'll notice I jiggled that. See how it wasn't loose. Now I don't want you to crush this bakelite. Right, it's bakelite. It's an old plastic that they used to use in the industry called bakelite. And I don't want to crush the bakelite, but I want to make sure this baby's firm. Okay, because we're going to do some vigorous like rubbing of this thing. Okay, and then we've got a cord. And we're going to plug this in. Now, I don't like to plug it in until I'm all ready to go. Okay? So I'm going to get this thing. I even like to place this on here while well, it's cool. It's a lot easier to kind of deal with. And I can make sure that that piece of E3 stays put. Okay? Now, I also have a block of wood. A lot of times I'll just set a block of wood on this just to kind of keep pressure. I do have to make sure it doesn't shift when I do this, right? But I put a little pressure on it. And then I can plug this in and this thing will start heating up. Now because copper transfers heat really well, it should transfer the heat through the piece. And what we're doing is we're softening the toner, okay? We're softening this toner up by doing that. Now, a lot of people will do this on a um, hot plate. Uh, if anybody's ever used a photo, Photography press. I bet that worked amazing. I've never tried it. Do we have one of those? Anybody think of photo? We've done stuff like photo prints. No? You guys don't even know what I'm talking about. Okay, never mind. Um, but we basically want something that will heat up evenly and heat that toner and start to transfer the toner onto that clean copper. I don't want to lift this too soon or it'll lift my paper with it and then it'll, it'll shift. You gotta make sure that you keep this on there and like keep it for a while until it starts to get tacky and it sticks. Alright? So I'm gonna peek at it. Okay, looking good. So now what I can do is I can kind of hold the wood, the block of wood. And I can, remember, this is screaming hot. Don't touch this, okay? And then I'm gonna start using my burnisher. And I'm gonna rub 